Hello everyone and welcome back to Deciphering Weather. In today's video we have PTC-19 on its way to becoming future Sarah. Will it become a Mitch 2.0 and being a flooding threat to Honduras, Belize, and the rest of the Caribbean? If you like detailed weather breakdowns, hit the subscribe button and notification bell to get all of my upcoming videos. We're looking at the latest satellite image of the Atlantic Basin thanks to TropicalTibbets.com for Wednesday, November 13th, 2024. The Black Arrow is now newly formed PTC-19, as according to the National Hurricane Center, as of their 4 p.m. update, Eastern Time. And we see that this is going to be potentially a major threat to Honduras, Belize, the Yucatan Peninsula, as it slowly, and I mean slowly, moves its way into this westward towards this region and is going to be dumping a ton of rain over the next seven days. Here's the vorticity signature of our developing cyclone. As you can see, it's slowly getting itself organized into a more circular closed low. Hence the PTC warning from the National Hurricane Center so they can start issuing tropical storm watches and warnings ahead of this storm to get everybody prepared. Here's a close-up view of our developing cyclone. Still not completely there, but we are starting to see that closed low form underneath that big thunderstorm complex that you see on the left side of your screen. So we have winds right now of 30 miles an hour, which would be tropical depression level. Um, it's moving west at 6 miles an hour, so that's relatively slow compared to most hurricanes that we've seen. And you can see there's a bunch of those S's just stacked up just north of Honduras, just off the coast. And if it does take that path and stays off the coast, it's a similar situation we had with Hurricane Mitch back in 1998, where it was a major hurricane, but parked itself just north of Honduras in the Gulf of Honduras and sat there dumping rain for days on end. So that's why we potentially could see the same situation before this one eventually gets caught up by a cold front and swept north into the Gulf of Mexico towards Florida. Now, as you can see here with our spaghetti track guidance models, most of them just take a beeline west, stalls, and then eventually gets picked up by the cold front and moves to the north. In terms of strength right now, Tropical Storm is definitive. Category 1 and 2 are a possibility. So here's the key messages from the National Hurricane Center regarding PTC-19, future SARA. On the left is in English and on the right is in Spanish. You can pause this and take a chance to read it. So let's look at the models and see how this could all play out. So this is the GFS 850 millibar cyclonic vorticity. So this is the spin and energy in the atmosphere 5,000 feet up from the surface of the water. And this is where our storm is starting to form. It's got an upper level ridge overhead which will decrease the wind shear in this region and protect its moisture bubble and that moisture bubble could be very life-threatening as we'll show you. We also have very above average sea surface temperatures in the Caribbean. Temperatures are 30 degrees Celsius so we are plenty of warm waters to fuel this storm for if it can get itself organized faster into a rapid intensification potentially with those conditions available to it. So we have Friday, two days from now on November 15th. We see this is where the storm's going to park itself at this point, right just north of Honduras in the Gulf of Honduras. Upper level ridge will still be there, so the wind shear will be very light. But you can see just to its north in the Gulf of Mexico, it's very strong. So once this cold front does pick it up, it's going to rip this storm apart. But here's all that dark green sitting over Nicaragua, Honduras, and eventually Belize and the Yucatan as this slowly moves westward. It's just going to dump a ton of rain. The reason why it's going to stall? Well, we're going to have high pressure to its north. And before we get that uh, cold front to pull it northward, it is just going to sit there because of very weak steering currents and the high pressure not allowing it to move north into the Gulf of Mexico initially. So here we are three days later on Monday, November 18th, 
and you can see it hasn't moved very far. It's only now centered over Belize on this model run. So because of the slow movement and the land interaction, we don't see a very strong storm. It's only a 1,005 millibar low pressure system, so it's just a tropical storm on this model. But any of that uh, movement staying over land, over the water this entire time where it's very warm with these low wind shear environments and a ton of moisture potentially could maintain hurricane strength like Hurricane Mitch did during that whole time. If it stays close to the land or even makes landfall in any of these regions with the mountains, it could rip the storm apart and keep it weak, which w but still can cause a lot of life-threatening flooding from the thunderstorms associated with this system. And then we go two more days to a week from now, next Wednesday, November 20th, and the storm finally gets caught up by our cold front, ripped apart, shredded apart. You can see its vorticity is stretched from the Bay of Campeche all the way up to just east of the Tampa Bay region of Florida in the eastern Gulf of Mexico. 1,004 millibars, strong subtropical jet just to its north and west. And that's a lot of wind shear tearing this storm apart as it enters the Gulf of Mexico. And then all that rain and moisture will get pulled up towards the Florida Peninsula in the process. If we look at the European model, we see very similar situation. This one stays just off the coast a little bit longer. So it maintains its strength a little bit more before weakening. And then eventually that high pressure does move out of the way. Cold front sweeps it to the north just like the GFS. This is the big threat though. The town of rain that's going to occur on the north coast of Honduras into Belize, Nicaragua, anywhere in those purples, you're talking two to six inches of rain. In the yellows, you're talking upwards of two feet or 600 millimeters of precipitation. So we're going to talk a lot of flash flooding, a lot of mudslides in the mountains. Everything's going to be completely rained over, flooded over from the system, especially if it moved as slow as the models are predicting. Here's the ensemble models showing the good agreement that this will eventually curve to the north into the Gulf of Mexico. And then we'll have to see from there if it maintains some strength before getting towards Florida, or if it's going to be ripped apart completely thanks to those strong wind shear effects from the subtropical jet. So PTC-19, future Sarah is going to be making its way towards Honduras, bringing catastrophic flooding rains to the region, and then eventually moving westward towards Belize, Guatemala, the Yucatan Peninsula, and then in about a week's time from now, up towards Florida. Next name on the list is Sarah. Any names stormed after that would be Tony, Valerie, and William if we do finish out the list. As a reminder, we have super thanks available on Deciphering Weather, so if you'd like to donate to the channel, please go down to the heart button where it says thanks. Thank you for watching this video. If you liked it, please hit the like button and leave a comment. Please share this video with your family and friends on social media. And if you need one like detailed with the breakdowns, hit the subscribe button and notification bell to get all of my upcoming videos. Thank you and have a great day.